company that we buy stuff from. Where's the card? Here we go. Bitterroot. There's no advertisement. I'm not sponsored by them or this isn't a paid advertisement or anything. Set that to the side. Got our housing here. Just try to clean off the inside so I'm gonna need junk out of there. Get that sit and dry. And then we got the rest of our housing. nozzle. Always make sure it's... You won't always get it super clean. I mean, it gets stained as much, you know. It's seeing the combustion gases. So, I don't know if you can see that. But, you can see the riding on the side now. I don't know. Down there. What I do with the injector nozzle is I'll swing this around and I'll actually, it's going to be tough, stick the brake clean in it and hopefully I don't hit the camera or anything else. We'll do that, that way, clean out, spray in there, that way it cleans out any carbon or anything inside. It's worked for me, I don't know if it's the best way. It works for me though. And so basically you'll cover, so you don't get sprayed in the face. You got the little hole up top, you want to cover that with your finger when you do it. Or it will shoot back at you. do is the plunger here. We're going to make sure that can go. It normally goes in this way. Yeah, if we can see. So the injector sits in the like this. This is the injector body. And the plunger goes in the top. If you can see it goes in this way. Right here. And I like to wiggle it down in there. It'll be a little tough at first. It's got to line up tight tolerances. Just make sure it slides through there. Nice. This one sticks at the end just a hair. So. Take a little 2000 grit sandpaper. You don't get crazy with it. And I just wrap it around. Just run it like that. I guess you could lubricate this with a little water or, or oil. It'll work a little bit. Clean it off. Use a little brake clean again. Get any of the material off that you sanded or any of the sanding grit. Oh, yeah. That's better. Okay, that's good. Now, we'll check our injector nozzle and our needle or plunger and make sure it slides in and out. And that, it, it'll, it'll get stuck a little bit. If you look, there's a little line. I'm not sure, but right here, you can kind of see that. I imagine what it is is just a raised area that they leave up for machining. Acts like probably acts like a seal, so fuel doesn't come back up that needle. That'll catch, especially when you're going in with it. A little tough, but that needle feels good and it comes right out. That's great. 
I like that. So that's good. This on. I'll use the pick somehow. You really don't need it. I'm gonna put a little bit on there. Smear it around. That's why it's lubricated. Then we're gonna take two long alignment pins. I'm gonna put those in. And at this point, you want the metering body that looks like this. And it's the side that holds the ball bearing right here. The kit comes with a new ball bearing. Okay, and I always put a little Lucas right in that hole. I don't know if you can see that. Put a little Lucas in there. Drop the ball bearing right in there. That way the ball bearing's in. There's only one way, well, I say that. But you can see the two pins here or offset, you want the ball bearing to face the housing. So, you're gonna, if you ball bearing setting like that, housing's like this, and the ball bearing needs to face the housing. So we're going to assemble it just like that. Next is this guy. This is that one that had a little rectangle piece right here. Okay. What do I do? Put a little Lucas in that one. That way it holds it. Okay. Put that down in there. Just like that. So then this one goes down also. And if we can get that. There. This one goes towards it. And again, the alignment dowels are to where you really can't mess that up, put it down, and it goes like that. Issue there. So then we're gonna take this little guy. Looks like that. Put a little lube down there. Put that with the with it facing up. It goes right in the center. Just so it sits there. Spring from that kit. Set it on there. And then we'll get this guy. And you want to make sure the smaller end right here goes into the spring. This side goes into the housing. Okay. Big side up. Just like that. Okay, then we have this housing right here. Okay, you can see there's alignment dowel holes. I always put a little bit of lube right on top because that'll move up and down. that together or however for some reason I can't line it up. Oh, there it goes. Just like that. And that longer side of that piece that sits on top of the spring will poke through. So you should be able to feel it right here. See how it's just sticking up just a little bit? Right there. And that's how you want it. So then you got the two littler dowel pins. And they go on top here. Take your injector nozzle that goes into the engine. I put a little lube in that where the needle goes into. Put our needle in there. 
just like that. And then that lining up with the dowel pins on here can only go in one way. And that's together. You're always going to have some of that white o-ring on there. I don't know why it stains or, or gets stuck, but it's always going to be there. I mean, I, I guess if you did some other clean solution, but as you can tell, that gets it pretty, that uh, carburetor cleaner, parts cleaner, does a good job. So, it's all clean inside. I'll put a little more lube inside where the o-ring seals. Slide her down on there. You can just spin it. I like to get it snug before I go over to the vise. That way, the internals don't come loose. Let's see. It's good. Okay, now we'll go to torquing the body. Okay, we're going to torque the injector body. Again, you're going to put your hold down clamp on it, line it up just like if you're going to put it in the engine. Put it in the vise. Snug it down. I always, if I'm tightening or loosening, I always put that hold down up against the jaw. That way it doesn't spin whenever I go to torque it. Snug it down. Okay. I'm going to use our 27 millimeter again. Put it on. Set the torque wrench to the correct torque. A Harbor Freight torque wrench. My more expensive torque wrenches are elsewhere, and I've done it with those before, and I've tested with this, and I've done other torque specs just to make sure. And this gets me plenty close enough. Okay. I torque it to 55 foot pounds. That's what I figured out a long time ago before I had torque specs. Whenever I used my torque wrench, it showed somewhere around 60 to 55 or 55 to 60 foot pounds whenever I was breaking it loose and uh, so I've always stuck with 55 always had good luck with it okay now we have that torqued our injector body is almost completely together next we're gonna put our plunger in and a new spring so you want to put this on just like that I put a little lube on the plunger, that way it's not dry. Put her in the spring. And you'll have to wiggle a little bit to get it in there. Then you got the plunger hat, I guess you'd call it. Make sure it's clean. Put a, I put a little lube on it all the way around. Slider on top. I always leave the excess lube on there. It helps the valve or the uh, spool valve body slide on. 